Let's go over how to find a basis for and the dimension of the solution space of a homogeneous linear system. In this example, we have two equations and four unknowns. I'll leave links in the description to my videos introducing bases and dimensions if you need to review. To find the dimension of the solution space, we'll need to find how many vectors are in the basis. So we'll need a basis for the solution space. And to find a basis for the solution space, we need to solve the system. So let's represent the system with its corresponding coefficient matrix. We, of course, don't need to include the constants since they're all zero. So here's our matrix. Let's perform Gauss-Jordan elimination to get into reduced row echelon form. You can verify that the reduced row echelon form of this matrix is this one here. You can see that we have leading entries in columns one and two. So x1 and x2 are our leading variables and will not be free. However, columns 3 and 4 do not have leading entries, and so x3 and x4 will be free variables. We could say that x3 is equal to a parameter s and x4 is equal to t. And from there, we're able to express the rest of the unknowns in terms of s and t as well. From row 1, we have that x1 must equal negative 1 fourth x3, but x3 equals s, so negative 1 fourth s. From row 2, we have that x2 must equal negative 1 fourth x3 minus 1 x4, but x3 is s and x4 is t, so x2 equals negative 1 fourth s minus t. And there we go. We've got a parametric set of equations describing the solution space. So what do the solutions to this homogeneous linear system look like? Well, they look like this, which in vector form, we have four unknowns, x1 through x4, looks like this. x1 has to be negative one-fourth s, x2 has to be this, x3 is a parameter s, and x4 is t. We can then write this single vector as a sum of two vectors. This vector captures the coefficients of the parameter s, and this vector captures the coefficients of the parameter t. By letting the parameters s and t range over all real numbers, we would describe all solutions to this homogeneous linear system. Thus, we have a basis for the solution space. The basis contains this vector and this vector. Let's say we call this vector v1 and this one we'll call v2. So we're saying this set of those two vectors is a basis for the solution space. How do we know that? Well, obviously the vectors span the solution space. They came directly from solving the system. For it to be a basis, the two vectors also have to be linearly independent. In this case, with only two vectors, it's easy to see that they're not scalar multiples of each other, and so they are linearly independent. But furthermore, solving a homogeneous linear system like this by putting the coefficient matrix into reduced row echelon form will always produce a linearly independent set of vectors that span the solution space. So this is our basis. Finally, what's the dimension of the solution space? Well, by definition, it's the number of vectors in a basis for the solution space. Hence, the dimension of the solution space is 2, because this basis we found has two vectors, and any basis for the solution space necessarily would have two vectors. So that's how to find a basis for and the dimension of the solution space for a homogeneous linear system. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my linear algebra course and linear algebra exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about. Stressed out, honey, I've been stressed out lately. Don't know what's what, don't know what I'm stressed about. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about.